I like to discuss topics related to infrared photography. In this video, I'll discuss which Fujifilm X-mount lenses work well for infrared photography. Most lenses are designed and tested to work in visible light. In some cases, these will work fine for infrared. However, some lenses can display a hot spot of light in the center of the image, particularly at higher numbered apertures. Lenses with visible hotspots at all apertures are not recommended for infrared photography. I'll cover all X-mount lenses that I've tested in IR or that I've found test results for. There are links to these resources in the description below. This will include all Fujinon lenses, some third-party lenses, my lenses, and finally my recommendations. This is not a guarantee that a particular lens will work in infrared. There's a wide variety of cameras, lenses, filters, and editors. Different combinations will produce different results. Even the same combinations can produce different results. I recommend testing any lens you wish to use in infrared before taking it out on a big shoot. Okay, before we dive into the individual lenses, let's talk about the rating system that I'm using. So if you see a red X next to a lens, that means that it is unsuitable for infrared. It produces hotspots at all apertures. If you see a yellow exclamation, that means that it may be usable at some lower apertures, lower f-stops, but not at higher ones. So definitely take those with caution. They're going to be more limited. If you see a green check mark, that means that a lens works well at all apertures and all focal lengths for infrared. Okay, let's start with the wide angle zooms. First up, we have the XC zooms. The 15 to 45 does not perform well in infrared. The 16 to 50 is usable at F8 and lower, so take that with a bit of caution. The 10 to 24, which is a fantastic wide angle zoom, doesn't work well in infrared, unfortunately. The 16 to 55 is only usable at F6.4 and lower. The 18 to 55 is unusable at all in infrared photography. This is a lens that I have and I've tested and unfortunately doesn't work well. There are a couple good choices available for wide angle zooms though. We have the 16 to 80 millimeter and the 18 to 135 millimeter if you're looking for a single zoom lens to put on your infrared converted Fujifilm camera, then these are good choices. For telephoto zooms, again the XC 50 to 230 does not perform well in infrared. The 55 to 200 performs better but only at f8 and lower, so use that with caution. That's a lens that I have um, and I've used it for infrared, so definitely usable but use with caution to keep an eye on the f-stop. The bigger, heavier, more expensive Fuji zooms, telephoto zooms, are great in infrared. The 50 to 140 and the 100 to 400 produce no hotspots at all apertures and all focal lengths. If you're looking for a teleconverter, I think you're going to be out of luck because the standard Fujifilm teleconverters will not work well. They both produce hotspots. Now moving on to prime lenses, we'll start with the fisheye and super wide. First of all, we have the LensBaby 5.8mm circular fisheye. So this is a lens that will produce uh, the, that circular image that uh, you're not going to be able to correct uh, the distortion for. Um, this is interesting because th there's a number of LensBaby images that are made available through LifePixel. You can get them from other sources as well, but what's interesting is that LifePixel guarantees that they'll work with all of their filters, uh, their infrared filters, and presumably that means it would work with other infrared filters as well. So that's interesting. The Samyang Rokinon 8mm and 12mm lenses, those are both two lenses that I have. I like the fisheye, the 8mm. The f5.6 limiting uh, limiting factor is not that big of a deal because you can typically get, you can get a ton of depth of field with a fisheye lens anyway. Uh, so that's an interesting lens. I, I haven't used the 12mm as much, but if you're really looking for the widest lens you can get to use in infrared, then definitely look look at the Venus Optics 9mm. This is a zero distortion lens, so there's no rectilinear distortion. It doesn't have any of the fisheye effects. Uh, this is going to be the widest lens you could get for infrared. Now looking at wide primes, the 14 millimeter is an excellent lens. This is a lens that I use and I've been very happy with the results from this lens, highly recommended. The 16 millimeter 1.4, this is a real bummer because this is a great landscape lens, super sharp, one of the best Fuji lenses available. However, doesn't work well in infrared. 
there's mixed results on, on whether it works well or not, so definitely use that with caution. The 16 millimeter 2.8, this is a lens that I picked up. I was super excited about it when it first came out. I thought this was gonna be a great, lightweight, inexpensive landscape lens for infrared. Mixed results with this as well. There was some weird things happening, not traditional hotspots, but other weird effects in infrared, like broader hotspots, I guess. Ultimately though, the, the corners were so soft because of the distortion in this lens that I just ultimately sold it. So that not a lens that I would recommend, so use caution if you're looking at either of the 16 millimeter lenses. The 18 millimeter uh, does not work well in infrared. I've owned that lens as well and sold it. Both of the 23 millimeter lenses work great for infrared. So those are some, a couple great choices. Moving on to the normal primes, the Fujinon 27 millimeter pancake lens does not work well in infrared, nor does the Zeiss 32 millimeter. I've looked for information on the XC 35 millimeter and haven't been able to find anything. So if you're interested in that lens, use with caution. But you know, there's a lot of other great choices at 35 millimeter. The Fujinon f1.4 and f2 lenses are both fantastic. Um, and also there's another lens baby lens that's available, the Burnside 35 millimeter. This one produces swirling bokeh and vignetting that you can control uh, with a slider, that, that yellow slider on the side of the lens. So that could be interesting if you're looking for some different effects, but lots of choices in 35 millimeter. Moving on to telephoto primes, uh, we have the 50 millimeter, which I have and I've used, that's an excellent lens. The Zeiss 50 millimeter is only really usable at f8 and lower hotspots higher than that for the fujinon typically portrait type lenses they don't fare so well in infrared the 56 millimeter is a no-go the 60 the 90 all perform very poorly in infrared the 80 millimeter i have not been able to find any information about that but i would probably assume it's in the same category the 200 i, I don't know how that performs no information on that either but hey if you'd like me to test that for you please send one my way and i'd be sure to test it and put out the results for everybody love to see what that lens looks like in infrared However, there are some choices for telephoto primes. We have two lens baby lenses, uh, both velvet, the 56 1.6 and the 85 1.8. These have a bit of a glow effect, so clearly designed for portrait work, but could produce some interesting effects in infrared as well. There's a variety of third-party lenses available for the Fuji X-mount system from a whole bunch of different manufacturers. I've listed some of them here. These have not been tested. I haven't tested these. I haven't found anyone else who's tested these, so if you're interested in one of these lenses for infrared photography be aware that they may may work may not work or may work poorly in terms of hot spots when it comes to infrared photography okay so let's talk a little bit about my lenses i've mentioned these briefly as we went but my favorite lenses for work in infrared are the 14 millimeter which is fantastic i'm very happy with that lens great wide angle lens the 23 millimeter is sort of my workhorse that's i've shot the most number of shots with that and then the 50 millimeter is great as well for the Samyang Rokinon lenses, as I mentioned earlier, I have the 8mm and the 12mm. I didn't list the 12mm here because it's very close to the 14 and I would rather just use the 14 rather than deal with worrying about the, the hot spots on the 12. But the 8mm is a great lens and it produces some really cool effects, uh, the fisheye effect. So if you're looking for a unique look there, then definitely check that lens out. I also have the 55 to 200, which does have hot spots at higher apertures, and I don't use it as much for infrared, but it's nice to have around. Taking a look at a bit of the distribution for the, the how much I use each of these lenses, I definitely use the 23 millimeter the most, although the 14 is gaining and could surpass it at some point. And then the 50 millimeter comes in third. The 16 millimeter, oh, I just, ooh, I really wanted that to work so bad. I was so excited about that lens, the size, the weight, uh, the price point, it was all right there, but what was not there was the image quality that I wanted. Not a lens that I could recommend, but actually that led me to purchase the 14 millimeter, which I've been extremely happy with. And at the end, it worked out. I've got the, the 14 millimeter, which works great. The 23 is fantastic and the 50 is fantastic. So great lenses to use in infrared. Something you will definitely want to keep in mind when considering which lenses to purchase is external filters and what the thread size is for each of these lenses. For example, with my lenses, the 14 millimeter takes a 58 millimeter thread, threaded filter. The 23 takes a 43 millimeter filter and the 50 millimeter lens takes a 46 millimeter filter. If you're going to purchase external filters to avoid buying a set of filters for every single lens, you may want to buy for the largest lens you have and then use stepping rings to step down. 
The fisheye lens does not take a filter ring, and my 55 to 200 takes a 62 millimeter filter, but I don't use that as much, and I, so I haven't purchased filters for that, but I can purchase filters for the smaller lenses and then step down to the other sizes. So let's talk about which lenses that I recommend across these categories. So when we talk about wide zooms, you really only have two choices. You have the 16 to 80 millimeter f4 and the 18 to 135 millimeter. So if you're going to get a single lens, one of the benefits of that is that you only need to buy one set of filters. You don't need to worry about stepping rings or any of anything along those lines. So that's definitely a convenience. You won't have to change lenses, but the quality may be slightly lower than you'd get with a prime. So it's really about what, what you're interested in terms of trade-offs. Getting multiple prime lenses means you'll change lenses and you'll have to deal with different filters or stepping rings, so it's a little bit more cumbersome, but it's for better image quality. So if you'd rather like have the convenience of a zoom lens, then this is the way to go. In terms of recommended telephoto zooms, as I mentioned, the 55 to 200 is great. Just keep that f-stop at f8 or lower in order to avoid hotspots. And then the 50 to 140 and the 100 to 400 are both great. Again, you'll need those larger filters, the 72 millimeter, the 77 millimeter filter threads for those, but these are great for infrared. Now, when it comes to primes, the lens baby circular fisheye is really interesting. So that's a definitely a, gonna be a creative choice, produce really interesting lenses. If you're looking for the widest lens available for infrared that is rectilinear, so no distortion, that's gonna be the Venus Optics nine millimeter. And that actually does accept filters. So that's a really interesting choice. My favorite for wide angle is the 14 millimeter. So this is a great, all around wide angle lens definitely works well in infrared and I highly recommend it. Looking at the F1.4 normal primes, we have a 23 millimeter and a 35 millimeter from Fuji. So these both work great in infrared. So these are both great lenses. When we look at the F2 lenses, this is a great set of choices as well. The 23 millimeter, the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter are all very small, lightweight, great image quality. They're all very similar in thread sizes as well. So if you want to get multiple of these lenses, you can get one thread size, say maybe the 46 and use a stepping ring to go down. So very convenient. These are great lenses. And then finally for recommended lenses, we have the lens baby lenses. The Burnside 35 millimeter will produce a circular bokeh and then the velvet 56 and 85 millimeter produce a glow. These are, you know, these are kind of designed, I think, to be portrait lenses, but they could produce some interesting uh, effects for infrared. So that's it. These are my recommendations for Fuji X-mount lenses for infrared photography. There are links for the recommended lenses in the description below. There's also links to the sources for the tests for these lenses below. Which X-mount lens do you use for infrared? Let me know in the comments below. In a future video, I'll cover vintage lenses mounted on Fujifilm cameras. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks. Thanks.